for the next master's class long-term iron condors, you know, in the vicinity of 30 to 60 days uh, out. Uh, today is for educational purposes only. Here is the class schedule, folks, for, here is the class schedule for uh, the next iron condor class. It'll be starting a week from Thursday, a week from Thursday, and the usual. It'll go six weeks, Thursday. We'll start on a Thursday, go Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, end on a Tuesday. Uh, cost is two ninety seven. All classes recorded and archived. As usual, Q and A anytime before, after class, during. Uh, if you watch it recorded, whether you watch it live or record, doesn't matter. You know, months after the classes, you're reviewing. If you want to ask questions, you can do that. Um, uh, there's six classes. Probably, I'll be teaching four of them. Uh, Jay Bailey, who works with me, will be teaching at least one, and Mark of Fenton will probably be teaching a class. And so it should be a great class. And as I said, volatilities are higher. And uh, what a week, right? What a week uh, starting uh, last week in the market. Uh, let me go the other way. All right. I started building this um, Friday. Took a few slides Friday and then took a few slides, uh, I think, yesterday. But Friday was the, uh, it wasn't the carnage day. The carnage day was Monday. Um, and uh, the Friday was, uh, let's go back a second here. And, uh, Let's go back a second here, and then we'll uh, uh, go from there. Um, so on Friday, SPX was 29.20, VIX was 19 and a half uh, during the day. And uh, but let, let, let's let's just talk about this move for a second here. Uh, overall, let's just go back. Let's say what has happened in the last week. And so if we look at what has happened in the week in, in this market, it's basically been a week, right? Uh, everything that has happened has basically been uh, in the last week. And in July 30th, last Tuesday, a week ago Tuesday, we closed to 3013 in the SPX. Sun was shining. Kids were out drinking lemonade with their friends. Everything was fine. And then Wednesday, really, it wasn't horrible. Wednesday, uh, July 31st, we closed to 29.80, down 33. Not a big deal, even though what happened that day is the ATR started to pick up because we had quite a bit of a range between the low and the high. We had a about a 59-point move between the low and the high, 59-point range, which is a lot. But Wednesday alone, even though it pushed ATR up a bit and VIX went up pretty under, under control. But Thursday, August 31st, you had another day, down day, Friday down day. And so what we haven't had in a while is three down days. You know, you think about it, Wednesday was down 33, Thursday was down 27, Friday was down 21. If we went down 33, up 27, down 21, no big deal, but we went three days down in a day. And then Monday was the carnage day, right? That scared everybody into thinking the world is over as we know it, including me at sometimes. <laughs> but it was a big move, you know, to get a 3% move in the SPX is very unlikely. And but it happened, right? was 2844 down 88 and then Tuesday we rallied some and they pounded the volatility a bit and then today uh, um, we've rallied quite a bit off the low and it looks like there's some support some support here on the in the market does it there uh, as of Monday and Wednesday around that 28 28 and a quarter move 28 and a quarter. So maybe until we until we bust through 29 and 100, you might say a short-term range, 
which could be for the next day or two, might be 28 and a quarter, 28, 22 to 2,900. And then from there, you know, let's see if we can hit 2,950, then 3,000, blah, 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 blah. But uh, we're still, if you look at the highs of all perspective, right, just a little more, a couple more seconds on perspective, the high in the history of the universe in the SPX is 3027, right? So 3027 minus where we were a couple minutes ago around 2873. So we're about 154 points off the high, right? Uh, that we hit, uh, we're about 154 points off the high that we hit July 26th. And so we're, uh, so what is that? About 100 and, what did I say, 157 divided by, you know, we're, we're maybe 5.5% off the high. So are we going to correct to a 10% this time? Um, I don't know. But, you know, so far, you know, again, I, I agree it's too early to make a conclusion. But, again, this is nothing yet compared to, um, November, December, right, where that move, which I think started October 10th, went down 20% in the SPX. But, you know, if someone said to me, Dan, do you think it's China? Do you think it's the Chicago Cubs? Do you think it's earnings? Do you think it's, I don't think it's any of that, right? I mean, they, some things have an effect, but you, you know what it is? We've been up almost 30% in the SPX since Christmas Eve, and we needed, you know, and it's unrealistic, and we needed to come down a little bit. That's it, right? You know, you could say these catalysts, but the, you know, the news changes every day, you know, and it, and so it's because financial journalists, that's their job to come up with some reason we went down for the day, instead of saying, hmm, how many six, seven month periods in the history of civilization since Cleopatra? Have we been up, you know, what is it, 25, 30% in, uh, in six, seven months? Not often, right? But what spooks everybody is the speed of the downside. And again, I think as we're talking about iron condors, first thing I want to say is, you know, again, you can train a, a chimpanzee to put on an iron condor, right? Managing an iron condor and, and making making some money with it's two different galaxies, right? And um, as you see with the big moves we've had, the point I want to make is the downside is a totally different universe than the upside, right? When you're managing iron condors, um, how you manage the downside is totally different, right? I mean, anybody can come up with rules and say, do this and do that on the downside. But the biggest problem with the downside, I don't care whether you're managing butterflies, calendars, whatever, is execution. Because things can go down a lot faster, right? And, and, and that's it. Um, and... And, and, and that's a big thing to deal with. So how do you deal with that? And, and that's one of the things we want to approach in the class as far as is also having a plan, right? How, how many, whether it be credit spreads, which is one half of an iron condor, iron condor, how many people have you talked to that, you know, they're doing good for 10 months and then one month they lose everything? Well, is it the market's fault? No, it just exposes you. Someone didn't have a decent plan to follow. So, um, I want to encourage you guys to jump in next week, Thursday, and we're going to really focus on, you know, obviously some of the different iron condors and some of the ones that we do the most of, but it's the risk management, when to put them on, when are warning signs that can get you out of a, you know, you know, before a correction hits, can get you to the sidelines, or what adjustments should you be using, and, and, and it's the risk management, right, folks, it's not. Again, anybody can put an iron condor on. It, it, it's the managing of it and the plan. All right.
So as you can see here, this is Friday where 2920 VIX was, uh, what was that, 19 and a half. And here was a, a slide of a 49-day iron condor taken uh, on Friday. And again, what's, what's the difference in doing an iron condor when the VIX is, you know, 13 or 14, which it was about a week ago, and, uh, you know, 19 or 20, which it was on Friday? And the answer is you get a little bit higher credit, but the bigger distance is, the bigger thing is you get a lot more room out on your short call or put. Like, for example, this iron condor, I took a 49-day, and this class will be focusing on 30 to 60 day iron condors and, 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 and we'll be doing a lot of live trades and uh, adjustments, management, how to do it. But here's a 49 day iron condor as a Friday, a nine and a 15 delta for the short call and put. And so, but if you look at it, SPX was at 2920, our short call is 3090 and it's 170 points, right? So when VIX is near the 20 area, a little bit higher, you know, it's 170 points uh, on the upside, which for 49 days is a lot. And on the downside, selling the 2690 put, 230 points on the downside. And uh, uh, that's a lot, right? You can see our Greeks were about minus 0.82 delta short, less than one delta short. Gamma minus 0.02, you get a little less negative gamma, meaning the deltas don't move against you as much as you go further out. And, and, and so I think with the volatilities higher in the market, you know, the perfect class right now is this one, longer term iron condors, because this is one of the strategies we're recommending and that we're doing a lot of insured and mentoring right now. And I think it's good appropriate time. Um, here I'm doing 10 wide credit spreads. You can see your theta is $4 a day on one contract, which is you know, normal for a 49 day uh, iron condor. The margin or risk on this trade would be $785. Uh, if your credit's $2.15 and you have 10 wide spreads because your risk is $1,000 less your credit, which would be $785. And so if I'm looking to make 10%, be 10% on 785, which is your risk, not your credit. And, um, and that's an iron condor. So very wide, uh, you're able to get a lot more room, double the distance you could in iron condors a week ago, and you're getting a higher credit. And so I think as long as the duration's further out, uh, it can withstand a lot of the uh, movement right now. But I think those are one of the better opportunities right now in the market. Um, yeah, but I do think because VIX is over 20 and the ATR, meaning the daily ranges are so crazy, I think, yeah, you, know, you got to be smaller size right now. It's just, you know, as Tom said, it's not, it may not be over yet. And so you just be judicial, you know, I mean, well, we, before, about a week ago, you know, we just finished maybe a good two, three month range, which was wonderful for income tra trading. You know, I remember, yeah, it's funny, a week ago, I don't know if any of you read it, we had an article in the Wall Street Journal talked about, you know, for a long period, we'd gone, we hadn't had a 1% move in the SPX in a long period as of last week, right? As of early in last week, right? what a difference a week makes, right? All right. One thing I want to talk, if you look here, this is just showing you that um, you can see when you look at a, because of the high implied volatilities, if you look on the right side, like a 12 or a 14 delta put, you can see the volatilities as of Friday were all in the 23-24 range. And, and, and the bottom line is because of the 
skews in the indexes where the volatilities, implied volatilities of the options are a lot higher in the puts than they are in the calls, you know, 14 delta put is going to get you a lot farther out of the money than a 14 delta call, right? And so doing iron condors uh, in the indexes is, is different, at least to set up than doing them in stocks, which don't have this type of a skew normally. So you can see here a 14, take a 12 delta to 2660 put here, puts you uh, 267 points out of the money, a 12 delta put. On the right side, if you look at the 2660 put, I mean, you're way out of the money, right? Like 260, 270 points. If you look, a 12 or a 12 delta call here, which would be the 3080 call, this is a 49 day trade. A 3080 call is a 12 delta. 3080 call puts you about 160 uh, points out of the money, right? So, what's the principle? Does a 12 delta call, 12 delta put, put you the same distance out of the money in the indexes? No, you can see here. The implied volatility of the 12 delta call was about 11. The volatility of the 12 delta put was 24, more than double. So how we set up these iron condors, depending on levels of the market, uh, the ranges, the ATR, the VIX levels is different, definitely different than we would in the stocks. All right. And how many of you have done stock iron condors? We'll definitely be talking about some stock iron condors 30 to 60 days uh, during the class. How many of you have done stock iron condors? Any of you? A few of you have. And, and they're nice too. I mean, as long as you can navigate around earnings or, or be careful when earnings are coming, but here's one, you know, decent one I, I, I like, uh, Costco. I mean, obviously, I think if you're looking at stock iron condors, you have to have a high enough dollar amount. Uh, generally, you want to be, I think, over 150 bucks uh, or so. Here's Costco, uh, you know, something that definitely has a lower beta than the market, doesn't move as much. But here's an example of one I think I took on August 2nd, which would be Friday last week. And you can see here, in this, I think I did a, uh, uh, sold the 287 and a half calls, about 16 points out of the money. I sold the 255 puts, about 16 points out of the money. And uh, I forget what the delta was, but it was the same delta for the calls and puts. And you get pretty close to delta neutral within, a, within one. So you don't, it's not as, uh, the volatility skew isn't, distorted in the stocks like it is in the indexes. And so definitely you'd have to trade the iron condors a little bit differently, at least how you set them up. But in this example, I'm bringing in a $95 credit. Uh, the, the width of the credit spreads are five. So my risk is like $395. I think I did a typo here. Uh, my margin is wrong, excuse me. Uh, my margin would be $405. So the credit is, uh, uh, $95, your risk is the width of the strikes, which is five, $500 minus 95 would be $405. Uh, Cindy says, I've done debit iron condors on stock and only credit iron condors on rut. Okay. Um, yeah, this would be a credit uh, iron condor. And there's many, I think, stocks that I, that I uh, will go over during the class starting next Thursday and talk about what I think are the best stock candidates for iron condors and why. Um, and we'll go over that. Um, here we've got, again, moving to uh, this week, uh, these slides were taken yesterday, right? Um, uh, Imran says, I have done them on XL, UIYR, and XBY, XBI for credits, easy to, 
easy too hard to get out. And, and I think what Imran just hit on is important liquidity is of an essence that you do, you know, we do a lot in SPX and RUT, uh, obviously IWM and SPY are fine, very liquid vehicles, uh, very diversified indexes. But if I'm gonna do them in stocks, I want good liquidity, right? Uh, and, and I think that's important. All bets are off. That's why I get very concerned about certain adjustments on the downside with indexes because I get very concerned with um, adjustments on iron condors with indexes because liquidity or it can really dry up on the downside. And like Rick said, he's talking about portfolio margin, and that's different. Portfo you know, most, uh, I like for most traders, unless you have a lot of experience, you trade something called Reg T, which is you're putting up your total risk as margin. And I think that's a good way to trade, especially iron condors. You can put, you know, portfolio margin is, just lets you get more leverage. Um, so you can, you have to put up less margin, but it's just like being at the casino, you know, you still have to pay Uncle Guido when things go against you. Uh, and so Jill says, how important is open interest and what is the minimum number I should look for? I'm not that big of a uh, guy into open interest, as long as it's in very liquid vehicles. So in other words, Jill, if I'm looking at a liquid vehicle like Apple or Amazon and SPX and, or RUT, and the open interest in a particular strike isn't so high, I don't care, right? I really don't care that much if I like that strike. But if I'm in a vehicle that doesn't trade a lot of options uh, and it has low open interest, absolutely bothers the heck out of me. And that's why I think liquidity, picking good vehicles with really good liquidity is very important. Um, Tom, Tom says, question, wouldn't it be better option to take the other side of the trade like buying an iron condor rather than selling an iron condor in this environment? Looks like a much better risk reward ratio. And, and, and that's an important, um, and that's a very important point what Tom said if if iron condors right think about this if you think they've been rough lately wouldn't you want to do the opposite how many would want to do the opposite of iron condors right now how many people instead of selling an iron condor or whatever strikes we're looking at would do the opposite betting on the move how many? How many? Well, let me ask you. Was yesterday, do you think, a good day or bad day for iron condor traders? Do you think yesterday was a good day or bad day? I guess it depends on what iron condor. If you were, um, if, how many points did VIX go down yesterday? How many points did VIX go down yesterday? Four or something, or was it down three and a half? But VIX was down a ton yesterday. And what, SPX, so four or five, that's humongous. And, now, we were up, what was it up yesterday? It was up uh, 37 points. So did a 37-point move negate, you know, if we're assuming a 30 to 60-day iron condor, would a 37-point move negate some of the volatility benefit? Yes, but I think net-net yesterday was a good day. And I, I think the, the, the bigger issue is, the bigger issue is, and we're gonna focus on this next week, how would you set up iron condors in this environment? What size would you do, right? What vehicles would you do? What duration would you do? 
What size would you do and how would you manage them? And I think that's really the answer, isn't it? I mean, Monday was a horrible day, right? Went down a lot. But let me ask you a question. I just checked this last week. Under the laws of the Geneva Convention, I don't know if any of you look at the Geneva Convention, but if I had an iron condor on Monday, right, and it was going down and I was at an adjustment point, and, and, and I'm assuming you guys have plans when you put on trades, but if I bought a put as an adjustment, and I checked the Geneva Convention, it allows buying puts. Was Monday a disastrous day for iron condor traders? Yes or no? If you bought puts as an adjustment Friday or Monday for your iron condor, was Monday the worst day of your No. So, so what we're getting at here, can we lump all iron condor traders in the same bathtub and say, you're all trading it the same way? No, 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 no. We were huge buyers of puts for the iron condors for many reasons. ATR was high, VIX was high, things were out of control, liquidity stunk. And, and, and so people were fine doing that. I'm going to say people, nobody got hurt, but again, it's how you trade something, right? All right, let me go to the next slide here. And this is an example of a 45-day iron condor yesterday. The market up, VIX was, again, around the 20.30 level. And that, that's kind of where we're at now, right? VIX around between 20 and 21. Uh, and and kind of this slide, which will be, I think, our last slide, um, is kind of where the market I took the slide yesterday, but it's kind of where we're at today, right? Around 28.77, uh, VIX is between 20 and 21. And so for, for a 45-day iron condor today, in this example, uh, we're selling a 45-day iron condor right now today. And here's an example of it selling the 30.45 calls. Um, you're getting about 170 points on the upside, right? And on the downside, if you're selling the 26.30 puts, excuse me, 2640 puts, it's about 230 points on the downside. So you're getting a lot of insulation for this winter weather environment we're in right now in the market. Uh, the credits for a 45-day iron condor uh, where you're doing maybe a 10 delta call, 15 delta put, uh, is margins about $785 on a $2.15 credit. And again, there's many ways to do iron condors and we'll talk about it. You know, do you sell a 10 delta, 15 delta, 20 delta, 30 delta? You know, they're different trades. So we'll be talking about the setup, how we would manage them, how we would adjust them, when to adjust. And that's really important, right? So I recommend putting iron condors in SPX week after week for the best, as the best liquid vehicle. Um, I like yeah, the regularity, you know, whether, you know, if I'm doing 45-day iron condors, I might put them on every other week, right? Because if you put them on every week, you're going to have quite a bit overlapping because you're not necessarily going to get out of them every week. You know, in this environment, you may get out of them quicker than normal just because, you know, volatility drops like it did yesterday. You're going to benefit uh, uh, quite a bit. But I think if I'm doing like 45-day iron condors, I'd probably put them on every other week. Um, I think that would be good, just so I'm not overlapping a lot of these things. But anyways, folks, that, that's kind of it today. If you have any other um, questions, I'm happy to stay here for, for a few minutes to answer any questions. We'll be starting up a week from Thursday. I think it'll be extremely practical. I mean, this is a str strategy we're looking at hot and heavy in the market right now in our community shared and mentoring uh, community. And so I think, and we'll be putting live trades on every class. So if you really want to get better at the craft and avoid, you know, the credit spread iron condor syndrome of, you know, you do well for four months and then you lose it all in one month, that's what this class is going to focus on. Risk management and the, and the right adjustments depending on what the market's doing. Jim says, on a down day, I used to do the put side of an iron condor 
and wait till an update to put on the other side? Do you ever advise this? I think what he's talking about is legging into an iron condor. I think, you know, if you've been trading SPX or, or RUT or SPY or Amazon or a certain vehicle for a long period of time, uh, if you've been trading these for a long period of time and you have a good feel of it, I don't mind you know, legging into them, but a lot of people who leg into this, meaning put maybe the call side first, then the puts, or the put side first, then the calls, they turn, into a, they turn it into a Laurel and Hardy Three Stooges. I usually just put it on, right? I'm not that good at legging or, you know, but if you're good at technicals, leg it, right? Uh, I don't have any problem. What is the quickest turnover trade you do? I mean, quickest turnover trades are just going to be shorter duration trades, right? I mean, you 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 can't, uh, and there's a plus and a minus. So we're focusing on more conservative uh, 45 to 60 day iron, 30 to 60 day iron condors, and they're going to have more res, more res, uh, resilience against the price move uh, than shorter term duration trades. But shorter term duration trades, you're going to get them off quicker because the fate is higher. Uh, Martin Scorizi, the famous Martin Scorizi, says, will you share more details about the classes, what type of iron condor, what adjustments, management, risk, et cetera? Uh, we'll be covering, um, again, we're focusing on duration of 30 to 60 days. Your more conservative iron condors that you could put more capital into. Uh, we'll be doing um, different types, maybe two or three different setup uh, iron condors like that. Uh, some high probability, low probability versions, some hedged versions that if you want to do bigger size, you can kind of hedge them at the beginning. Uh, we'll be probably addressing at least 10 to 12 key adjustments. And I will go, we'll go over in detail, Jay, myself, and Mark, when would you do one adjustment versus the other? Uh, probably the most crucial thing we'll be covering, even though people get they drool over themselves on adjustments. Two areas that are much more important than adjustments is having a proper profit target and a max loss at which you get out, regardless of adjustments. And then when do you adjust, right? But uh, but we'll be covering a very uh, specific four-step risk management plan. We'll be implementing these iron condors. We'll show examples of them. We'll put any type of iron condor we talk about, we'll put it on live. We'll probably just be covering the two or three most popular iron condors we trade and really hone in on trying to get you the specific how to do it, right? Just putting on an iron condor isn't enough, right? Um, when you have what happened over the last week, you're gonna get hurt. And so we're gonna focus, and, and what's nice is we still have some, you know, I don't think this, Follow a market will be over next week, so you're coming in at a good time, an appropriate strategy, and in an interesting market, and see how we manage it and, and what we talk about. Um, uh, again, we'll be talking about some uh, hedged strategies um, uh, at the beginning, um, but again, some will be with a hedge at the beginning, some won't be. I don't usually put a hedge at the beginning uh, because, you know, the key is just understanding when to adjust, right? And so we'll be talking about probably the two or three most popular iron condor trades that we do. So anyways, if you have any more questions on the class, you can email me, dan, at SheridanMentoring.com, and we look forward to seeing you a week from Thursday, uh, and you can sign up today on our site. So have a wonderful day, everybody. And uh, how would you have handled Monday on this one? Again, we've been talking about in Sheridan Mentoring for months and months ahead of this. We we're talking about it, which we talk about all the time, buy a put, right? If you're in it, you know, but, 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 but get, there's, there, there's a couple issues. We were, you know, as of, I think it was, Wednesday or Thursday was it, where the ATR went over uh, 27 in the SPX and the VIX went over 18, we kind of back off, right? Those are like, when, when that first happens, we kind of back off, but on the downside with the speed of the market and stuff, it's buying puts, right? 
Uh, it's the only thing you can do. Execution stinks there. You start playing around with spreads, it won't happen. So if you, you know, if you adjust it with a long put, but again, it's the key is not just, you know, again, it's not just an adjustment. If you adjust too late, is a long put going to help you? No. If you adjust when you're down 30%, is a long put going to help you? Not necessarily. So again, it's timing, but uh, uh, I had bought puts on Monday, and that's, that, that's what our students did on Monday. All right. Well, folks, have a wonderful day, and we will see you a week from Thursday. It should be a great class. Thank you.